Why are there no more angels being placed on our Latter-day Saint temples? In order to discover why this might be the case, let's investigate what this angel represents. Who is the angel on our temples? In the year 2020, it was a significant milestone for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It was the 200th anniversary of the first vision experienced by Joseph Smith. Some of the events that took place are as follows. Firstly, there was a proclamation of the Restoration. This was to commemorate 200 years since Joseph Smith experienced the first vision. Two, there was a Hosanna shout. This was also to commemorate the first vision and was given at the 2020 General Conference. Number three, President Nelson declared that 2020 was a hinge point moment for the church at the Rome Italy Temple dedication. He stated, Things are going to move forward at an accelerated pace. The church is going to have an unprecedented future, unparalleled. We're just building up to what's ahead now. The time to act is now. This is a hinge point in the history of the church, and your part is vital. Number four, the angel on the Salt Lake Temple dropped its trumpet. On the 18th of March 2020, the Salt Lake area experienced an earthquake and the angel sitting atop the temple dropped his trumpet. Number five, angels no longer being placed on temples. There are no temples under construction with groundbreaking dates later than the 14th of November 2020 with the angel Moroni. There are no new temples being announced that will depict the angel Moroni in official church renderings. And there was no symbolic reason given as to why this is the case. The removal of the angel from our temples is such a major symbolic change that I knew I needed to better understand what it represents before trying to determine why it might have been removed. Symbols are powerful teaching tools. Like the master's parables, they allow individuals to learn on their own level, superficially or profoundly, according to their degree of preparation and sensitivity. This is particularly true of the teachings Latter-day Saints receive in the temple. Now let's dive into finding out who is the angel. President Hinckley said that the angel Moroni statue was to represent the angel in Revelations 14 verses 6 and 7. The occasion is the placing of the capstone of the temple, the great round granite sphere which crowns the highest steeple on the east end. It is a day of celebration. Atop the ball is a bronze figure gilded with gold. The figure represents Moroni, prophet, writer, and compiler of the Book of Mormon. The figure represents the angel spoken of by John the Revelator when he declared with prophetic vision, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and sea and the fountains of the waters. President Hinckley here is explaining that the angel on the temple is the angel that John saw in vision. Now let's break down the identity of this angel that John saw. Elder Bruce R. McConkie wrote, Now as to the actual work of restoration, what angel performed this mighty deed, this work which involves the salvation of all men on the earth in these latter days? Who restored the everlasting gospel? Was it one angel or many? It is traditional and true to reply, Moroni, son of Mormon, the now resurrected Nephite prophet who holds the keys of the stick of Ephraim, the one, who th the one through whose ministry the Book of Mormon was again brought to light. The reasoning is that the Book of Mormon contains the fullness of the everlasting gospel. That therein is God's message of salvation for all of the earth's inhabitants and that this gospel message is now being taken by the Lord's witnesses to one nation and kindred and tongue and people after another. But other angels were yet to come. Moses, Elias, Elijah, Gabriel, Raphael, and diverse angels, all declaring their dispensation, their rights, their keys, their honors, their majesty and glory, and the power of their priesthood, giving line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. Thus, the angel Moroni brought the message, that is the word, 
But other angels brought the keys and priesthood, the power. And in the final analysis, the fullness of the everlasting gospel consists of all of the truths and powers needed to enable men to gain a fullness of salvation in the celestial heaven. So, is the angel Moroni? Yes, but it is much, much more than that. He kicked off the restoration, but who else would be responsible for finishing the restoration? The prophet Isaiah wrote, Who raised up the righteous man from the east, gave him to his foot, gave the nations before him, and made him rule over kings? He gave them as the dust to his sword, and as driven stubble to his bow. In the church's student manual, it says, Who is the righteous man from the east? John saw a similar vision to Isaiah's and spoke of this righteous man as an angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. The Lord revealed to the prophet Joseph Smith that this angel of the east was Elias, which was to come to gather together the tribes of Israel and restore all things. Of this angel, Elder Bruce R. McConkie said, Who has restored all things? Was it one man? Certainly not. Many angelic ministrants have been sent from the courts of glory to confer keys and powers to commit their dispensations and glories again to men on earth. At least the following have come, Moroni, John the Baptist, Peter, James, John, Moses, Elias, Elijah, Gabriel, Raphael, and Michael. Since it is apparent that no one messenger has carried the whole burden of the restoration, but rather that each has come with a specific endowment from on high, it becomes clear that Elias is a composite personage. The expression must be understood to be a name and a title for those whose mission it was to commit keys and powers to men in this final dispensation. Thus, the man from the east seems to mean angels of the restoration who are grouped together under the composite title of Elias. So, the angel is a symbolic representation of the title Elias. It's a composite of all angelic men- messengers involved in the restoration. But what about this last dispensation? Who is ultimately responsible for it? Which man must return as the angel from this dispensation? Malachi chapter 3. The Lord's messenger will prepare the way for the second coming. The Lord will sit in judgment. The people of Israel are commanded to pay tithes and offerings. They keep a book of remembrance. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. The church student manual explains, Who was the messenger sent to prepare the way of the Lord? And who was the messenger of the covenant? Joseph Smith explained, The spirit of Elias is to prepare the way for greater revelation of God, which is the priesthood of Elias, or the priesthood that Aaron was ordained unto. And when God sends a man into the world to prepare for a greater work, holding the keys of the power of Elias, it was called the doctrine of Elias, even from the very early ages of the world. Joseph Smith was also an Elias in that he was a forerunner, one who prepared the way, one who laid the foundation for the second coming through the restoration of the gospel. The time of the restoration makes this the time period and responsibility of Joseph Smith. Every prophecy about any of the great and glorious events destined to take place in the dispensation of the fullness of times is in its very nature a prophecy about Joseph Smith. It's clear from Joseph Smith's teachings that he believes himself to be this angel. Quote, Has the gospel of the kingdom commenced in the last days? And will God take it from the man until he takes him himself? Quick pause. He's speaking about himself here. The kingdom was committed into Joseph's hands in this final dispensation. Quote, I have read it precisely as the words flowed from the lips of Jesus Christ. John the Revelator saw an angel flying through the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. The scripture is ready to be fulfilled when great wars, famines, pestilence, great distress, judgments, etc. are ready to be poured out on the inhabitants of the earth. 
Another quick pause. So the work of this angel cannot happen until the end of this dispensation when these prophecies are about to be fulfilled. So this means that it could not have been Moroni. Moroni had already come. Nor could it have been accomplished in Joseph's lifetime. Quote, John saw the angel having the holy priesthood who should preach the everlasting gospel to all nations. God had an angel, a special messenger, ordained and prepared for that purpose in the last days. Woe, woe be to that man or set of men who lift up their hands against God and his witness. Quick pause. Joseph Smith is speaking of himself here. Quote, In these last days, for they shall deceive almost the very chosen ones. Hang on a minute. So, Joseph Smith is supposed to return as an angel? Is this our church doctrine? Polly P. Pratt, when he learned of Joseph Smith's death, wrote the following. I walked onward, weighed down as it were unto death. When I could endure it no longer, I cried out aloud, saying, O Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray thee, show me what these things mean, and what shall I say to thy people? Suddenly the Spirit of God came upon me and filled my heart with joy and gladness indescribable. And while the spirit of revelation glowed in my bosom with as visible a warmth and gladness as if it were a fire, the spirit said unto me, Lift up your head and rejoice. For behold, it is well with my servants Joseph and Hiram. My servant Joseph still holds the keys of my kingdom in this dispensation, and he shall stand in due time on the earth in the flesh, and fulfill that to which he is appointed. Brigham Young also taught, If we ask who will stand at the head of the resurrection in this last dispensation, the answer is Joseph Smith Jr., the prophet of God. He is the man who will be resurrected and receive the keys of the resurrection, and he will seal this authority upon others, and they will hunt up their friends and resurrect them when they shall have been officiated for and bring them up. Joseph Smith is the final embodiment of this Elias. He is the Lord's messenger that will prepare the way for the second coming. This last dispensation is ultimately his responsibility, a role that can only be completed upon his angelic return. He is the man that fulfills and embodies the completion of the restoration, which is the role of this angel that John saw flying through the mists of heaven, and he will personally return to hand the keys of the kingdom back to the Lord. In closing, I did mention at the start of this presentation that we would investigate why the angel is no longer on top of our temples. If Joseph Smith does in large part embody that angel, then why is he being removed from the temples? I believe this can be answered with the following question. Why do we not display the sign of the cross like the rest of Christianity? Think for a moment. Why is it? The answer is because we worship the risen Lord. He lives. The garden tomb is empty. So, why do we no longer place the angel on our temples? Perhaps it is because the angel has returned. If you would like to know more about these scriptures, prophecies, and latter-day events, including the return of Joseph Smith, Come and link arms with us in Zion or Bust, Facebook, and Discord groups. Links always provided below. We are Zion or Bust.